tonight. Strike deadline for Manitoba Hydro. What the city's going to do about this muddy mess, plus the symphony and the spectacle. Good evening. We begin with breaking news. 3,000 Manitoba Hydro employees walking off the job as we speak. The first strike in Manitoba Hydro's history. Let's go live now to the scene where Wabgeetuk Rice is standing by. Wab? I'm at the Manitoba Hydro facility in Point Douglas. The strike is about to get underway. Dozens of employees have showed up here at the front of the building with signs, and they're about to form a line and walk it around the building. Now, these workers belong to the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. That union represents about 3,000 hydro employees who do work like repair lines, maintenance, and other construction. Now, they were talking with Hydro this afternoon to negotiate a new contract with a wage increase, but those talks fell apart this afternoon. Here's what a union representative had to say about the strike situation. Always a worry if it's going to be a lengthy strike. One never knows. One never knows when we'll come back together to, to get a collective agreement uh, that will satisfy both parties, but uh, we're always hopeful. We're always prepared to bargain. Now, Hydro says because of the strike, customers can't expect delays in those repair and maintenance areas. And it says management staff will fill in to fill those, uh, those service gaps. In the meantime, hi, uh, two other unions representing some 1,600 Hydro employees have also voted to strike. And we'll know early next week uh, when they'll walk the line. Reporting live in Point Douglas, Wabgeja Grace, CBC News, Winnipeg. Now, we've learned an inmate at Headingley Jail died early this morning in Grace Hospital. It was a shock to his family because they thought he was perfectly healthy. Now, the man's family wants to know if he got any medical attention before he died. Sheila North Wilson has this exclusive story. <laughs> he was my best friend. I could never say no to him when he wanted something. Marita Moose hasn't slept since she heard her youngest son, Donald Moose, died at Grace Hospital around 4 o'clock this morning. He was an inmate at Headingley Correctional Institute for the past few months. Moose says he was in for breaching court orders, and she was looking forward to the day he'd be done serving his time. She never expected he'd die before she saw him again. I'll never forget my baby, you know. I love him so much. We're best friends. She's been told another inmate heard Moose having breathing problems around 10 Thursday night, but that he wasn't taken to hospital until around 1 a.m., just before his heart failed twice. Marita wasn't told about what happened to her son until 4 a.m. after he died. Someone from Headingley called her first, then a nurse called back to say he was gone. And she said, Donald passed away. He, he, she said that to me and I said, what's the matter with you guys? How come you didn't call me when my son was there? She and her family have more questions, especially since he wrote a letter to his sister this week saying he wasn't feeling well. Moose last talked to him on Tuesday. All he said is was a half a cold, I think he said. I don't know what it is, and I told him you better tell them. The family says he was taking pills for pain and depression, but otherwise he was healthy. The province confirms Donald Moose died at Grace Hospital and says a full investigation is now underway. Sheila North Wilson, CBC News, Winnipeg. Police have very little to tell us tonight about a body that was found earlier today. Officers were called to Elizabeth Way around 10.30 this morning. They found the body here. Officers admit they don't know how this person died at this point or how long the body has been there. They're not releasing the gender of the person. Very early in the investigation, they say they're still trying to figure out who this is. They dropped into a Kenora restaurant and asked for burgers to go. Nothing unusual with that, except that they dropped in in a multi-million dollar helicopter belonging to the Canadian Armed Forces. This chopper landed unexpectedly on a Kenora baseball diamond. The crew then walked across the street to the A&W. They ordered their meals and took off. The helicopter was one of two en route from Edmonton to Quebec. The crew told restaurant owner Randy Nickel they were refueling but couldn't find anything to eat at the fuel depot. A spokesperson for National Defense said the department would not comment until it had spoken to the crew. We are learning more also tonight about the 34-year-old man who was stabbed to death on Wednesday. His name is Ken Ketchaway. He may have been attacked while he was on the job, and friends are wondering if that job was ever the best place for him. Sean Reynolds has more. Those who know him say Ken Ketchaway wasn't turning his life around. He had already done it a long time ago. 
it's very unfair. I mean, uh, my coworkers and I, we've, we've been shed in tears over this guy. Like, it's just so unfair. Catchaway was the focus of a CBC interview back in January. He was running a carpentry crew for BUILD, an organization that teaches job skills to inner city men. Whoa, 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 what are you doing? That's him guiding workers. We were talking to him because he was a former gang member who left the criminal life behind. He told us how he managed to cut those ties. They know who I, who I am, and like I'm not going to run and wear anything, but I live in the North End, and I, I, you know, they don't bother me, and I don't bother them, and I don't try to go back to a gang. I don't want to go back, and I don't want to do anything, but I want to work and provide for my daughter. About a month ago, Catchaway left Bill. He was trying to get his high school education so he could join an apprenticeship, but he was denied employment insurance. Catchaway told ex-co-workers he needed money, so he took a job with OPK, a government-funded group that hires ex-gang members and teaches them carpentry skills. He started the job Tuesday. A day later, he was dead. He was working here doing a renovation at this job site. Police think he was stabbed here before running out into the streets. I can't comment on why he went there. Loney says he doesn't know if it was a good move for Catchaway to go to OPK. At Build, there are no gang members. Going to OPK brought Catchaway closer to gangs than he'd been in years. Sean Reynolds, CBC News, Winnipeg. Exactly one week ago, right now it was sunny and 27. Now it's cloudy and 8, which is closer to what we should be for this time of year. A little on the cool side. Northeast winds are at 15 kilometers an hour. The pressure's rising because we're on the other side of the low pressure system, which is well to the south of us. It continues to circle, uh, circulate cloud up into southern Manitoba, and the temperatures will fall to about 7 degrees by 8 o'clock and down to 5 by 11 o'clock overnight. I'm expecting lows in Winnipeg around 3 or 4 degrees under cloudy skies, and we'll just be dealing with this cloud through Saturday and probably Sunday as well. Morning temperatures around 5 degrees, and I'll show you what kind of weekend to expect when I come back in just a few minutes. He got hit with bear spray and then he was hit with the can too. The can actually fractured his skull. It happened in downtown Winnipeg on Kennedy Street. And now a man who lives here in Manitoba housing on Kennedy wants to know why his building is so unsafe. Gosa Savitska has more. Paul Bertrand lives in a Manitoba housing complex on Kennedy. He says it's full of problems. Alcohol, drugs, violence, abuse. And people who don't belong here keep getting in. People follow others going in without being buzzed. And uh, there's so, so much uh, activities going on in this building that it's absurd. This summer, there was a young man trying to get in. Close the door behind me to prevent him from coming in. He got upset, exchanged words, he wanted to fight. I just continued walking out the door. But he says the young man followed him. And he came racing up after me and he hit me in, in the back either with his knee or his foot and I was thrown forward. I then turned around and I saw that he pulled out a can of, can of what, is, what was pepper spray and I covered, tried to cover my face as much as possible. I was pepper sprayed all over my face and my arms. It was a burning, burning in the eyes and my skin was burning. Bertrand went back inside to call police. He says the guy started beating him with the can. I was hit on uh, the, the temporal lobe. That fractured his skull. But the worst part of it for Bertrand is feeling unsafe in his home. He says security officers walk between housing buildings on this strip, but no one is stationed here on weekdays. Lack of security. He thinks that should change. Kosha Savitska, CBC News, Winnipeg. Winnipeg-based Can West looks like it's getting ready to unload its newspapers. A report says the CEO of the National Post is in talks with private equity firms to buy the newspapers owned by Asper-controlled Can West. Now, those papers include the Montreal Gazette, the Calgary Herald, the, the Sun in Vancouver, and the Province in Vancouver as well. The reported price tag would be a billion dollars. That would knock another big chunk off CanWest's heavy debt. Last month it sold its TV assets in Australia, also to pay down debt, estimated at four billion dollars. They say the city has refused to help them. Some people who live in East Kildonan have been fighting for nearly a year to have their gravel back lane repaired. They say when it rains, it's undrivable. But the city has done nothing but thrown up Roadblocks, they say. Adrian Pan has their story. 
It may not look that bad right now, but residents who live on Hazeldale and East Kildonan say their gravel back lane turns into a muddy, smelly mess when it gets wet. We just drive in mud all the time, which is quite nasty. It's quite deep. In the spring, there's usually about, I'd say, 8 to 12 weeks that I can't park in my garage. It gets so muddy, you lose your shoes when you walk down the back lane. We say we live on a lakefront property. It's that wet back here. The problem is there's no gravel left. Sybil Ramprashad says the city has never put gravel down in the 10 years she's lived in the area. Ramprashad's called the city for help for months. Neighbor Nancy Constantine as city councillor Jeff Broati on speed dial. They were both told... The budget uh, for this year did not have any money in it for graveling whole stretches of lanes. In fact, it's been city policy since 1988 not to add gravel to gravel back lanes unless they are impassable. The women say Broati told them they could pay for gravel themselves or even build a front driveway to avoid using the back lane altogether. Neither option was appealing. We pay taxes for maintenance, general maintenance, and I consider replacing the gravel and grading general maintenance. Broati says he will be fighting for city money to fix and maintain gravel lanes, but the earliest anything could be done is next year. I mean, I don't think they'll necessarily have to be able to do every back lane right away. And actually, I don't think their lane would be uh, the first ones done. A speedier solution may be to complain to the city's 311 line. Last week, Steve Redmond did. Two days later, a city gravel truck came calling. I can't understand. We complained about the whole back lane, and he did it behind my house and left the rest of the back lane a muddy mess. The city says it would cost $1 million to bring Winnipeg's 90 kilometers of gravel back lanes back up to good condition. Adrian Pan, CBC News, Winnipeg. Staff at CKX Brandon put together their last newscast today, knowing it would be their last. Months of uncertainty ended suddenly yesterday when a potential buyer pulled out. Brandon's only television station began in the 1950s. CTV owns it. It gave notice in February the station could no longer make money, and so they were going to close it unless a buyer came forward, and ultimately no one was willing to take it over. Today, people in Brandon are coming to grips with the loss of a city institution. It's an awful thing that Brandon doesn't even have a television station. Like, we're not much of a city without something. I think it's, and I think it's awful for the people who work there to have found this out so suddenly. Most of the station's 40 staff will be looking for new jobs starting tomorrow, at a time when jobs in Canadian television are very hard to find. Hi, I'm Alex Friedman. There's a need for immigrant workers in this province. It's the reason the provincial government has been encouraging it for years. But how well are those immigrants treated when they get here? The I-Team has been following four people from the Philippines who came here looking for a better life, but they didn't necessarily find it. We'll tell you all the details coming up Monday on CBC News. having a riot going through letters I got from LaSalle School from the grade fives. I was out there about a week and a half ago. Uh, great letters. They're just a lot of fun to read. I haven't made it all the way through, but the kids are, are a lot of fun. His favorite line is the one that says, you are <laughs> no, no, a great no, no, man. No. <laughs> I, I think, think that's, that's, that's brilliant. That's a little overstated. You should photocopy <laughs> that and show it to everyone. Oh, maybe. Uh, or very, very, very fun. Or thank you. Very, very, very. Nice the writing, of various, Yeah, very yeah. good. It was a great time. Thank you. Uh, let's go to the maps and I'll show you exactly what we're looking at. Uh, before though, a look outside at what is a stadium filling with people who are wearing rain jackets. Good idea. Uh, we will see a little bit of drizzle tonight. There's drizzle at the airport. The streets are dry downtown, but uh, we're going to hear from Mitch Peacock in the next little while. He's at the stadium, and uh, we'll talk to him, see if he's wearing his raincoat or not. But we are seeing some showers around southern Manitoba. Here's a look at the current conditions. Eight degrees in Winnipeg, seven in Portage, and Morden and Winkler. Brandon has dropped to six in the last hour or so. Still eight in Kenora and Dauphin, nine in Gimli. Up to northern Manitoba now, or central Manitoba, into the double digits now with long Lots of sunshine today. Swan River and the Paw were able to get to 12 and 13 degrees earlier. Uh, 10 degrees in Barron's River right now. It's 11 in Flin Flon and lots of clear sky across the north. Must be a beautiful sunset for you. Uh, 9 degrees in Thompson and Lynn Lake and 4 right now in Gillum. 3 in Churchill. A drop of 1 in the last hour. 
Here's a look at the cloud cover on satellite and Doppler radar. Now, the radar's not picking up much of this drizzle. It's just that the uh, beams going out from the radar sites, they're trying to bounce off of raindrops. And the drizzle, the, the drops are just too small. So it doesn't really show up on radar very well. There's the low down to the south of us. It continues to circulate this cool, moist air up into southern Manitoba and will continue to do that through the weekend. The jet stream is, well, kind of south of us now. And that's why we're in the cooler air. It is warmer out west. And see this little area right here in western Montana? This is a winter storm watch. Just saying it's around the corner. A winter storm watch already in September. Uh, Futurecast looking like a cloudy day for Saturday. And I want to stop it at 11 a.m. because any time through the day we'll have a chance of showers. There's 8 o'clock at night into Sunday morning. Any areas where you see blue, we could see showers and really all across southern Manitoba. A few sunny breaks possible later on Sunday. Uh, here's how it looks tonight in the city. Just cloudy with some on and off showers. 3 degrees the low northeast winds at 10. 5 degrees in the morning and still cloudy. Kind of an unsettled, cool, cloudy weekend on the way. And then cool, cloudy with uh, some showers possible and 9 degrees for tomorrow afternoon. A north wind at about 10 kilometers an hour. A quick look at overnight lows across the province tonight. Threes and fours here in the south. For central regions, anywhere between 1 and 3 degrees. In the north, again, 1 to 3 degrees. And the cloud will fill in for you from the east. And then a cloudy day tomorrow with highs in the north between 6 and 8. About 8 degrees with a chance for some showers in northwestern Ontario. And maybe some mixed precipitation just east of Dryden. 8 and 9 degrees across central Manitoba. And we'll look for 9s and 10s across the south with cloudy and cool conditions through the weekend tomorrow. I'll be back with your extended forecast. David Letterman made a confession last night. Someone was trying to blackmail the popular host. How his popularity with the ladies is causing problems. You're watching CBC News Winnipeg. The human face of tough economic times. It's just brutal out there. I mean, it's closure after closure. Inside one plant as workers battle to get one final payout. We're going to fight till we get every penny they owe. The Fifth Estate, tonight at 9 on CBC. Danino, twice the calcium of most yogurts. Now with two free limited edition fridge magnets. From head to toe, Danino. From paint to plaster, tile to trim to drywall to decks, even remodeling. You can trust the pros at Handyman Connection to do it right, do it quick, and guarantee it in writing. Call Handyman Connection at 1-800-88-HANDY and get the things you want done, done. Introducing the all-new Chevrolet Equinox. It's the most fuel-efficient crossover on the highway. Better than the Honda CRV, Toyota RAV4, and even the Ford Escape Hybrid. The all-new Chevrolet Equinox. As a speed skater, Cindy Clausen doesn't like to waste time. Now that she can enjoy Windows Live services with an MTS email address, she saves time by checking her email, organizing her schedule, sharing photos, and backing up files all in one place. Save time online. Switch to the MTS High Speed Internet Lightning Plan for just $19.95 a month. On some breaking news for you now. We just got this video into the newsroom. Manitoba hydro workers are on strike. This is the picket line. And this is also the first strike in Manitoba Hydro's 48 year history. 3,000 people are now off the job. And Hydro's warning you may have delays in service if you have trouble with electricity. Well, guess who's hosting the 2016 Olympic Summer Games? Despite Oprah and Barack Obama, it is not Chicago. The winner is... Rio de Janeiro. 
Rio, the world's biggest party town, will welcome the whole world to town, becoming the first South American country to host the games. Chicago and Tokyo eliminated in earlier rounds. Rio finally beat out Madrid for the Olympics. It's a race against the clock in Indonesia as hopes for finding more survivors after an earthquake fade. Painstaking work, people doing it by hand, removing the crumpled concrete piece by piece, revealing another of more than 1,000 bodies so far found left in the wake of the quakes. Amazing, this woman survived after 40 hours trapped in rubble. Desperate relatives are searching for signs of their loved ones. Food supplies are running low. Indonesia's neighbors are now pledging help. An employee of CBS Television in New York, a producer for the news, has been indicted for blackmailing talk show host David Letterman. I have uh, had sex with women who work for me on this show. Now, my response to that is, yes, I have. <laughs> But it's no joke. A man named Joe Halderman is now accused of trying to extort $2 million out of Letterman, saying he had information about these affairs Letterman admits he's had. He went public with the case last night, Letterman did. He spelled it out in his monologue, admitting he had sex with women who work on his show. At one point, Letterman handed over a fake check to the accused, who deposited it into his bank account. That was a sting operation. Halderman could now face up to 15 years in prison. Well, the Blue Bombers are just minutes away from kickoff. Our Mitch Peacock is there. We go live to the stadium for a preview with Mitch in just a moment. You're watching CBC News Winnipeg. Buckley's guy. Think Buckley's cold and sinus liquid gels relieve my aches, fever, and sinus congestion? Yeah. Be more sure of Buckley's or your own identity. Buckley's? Buckley's cold and sinus liquid gels, they work. Neocitrin Extra Strength Daytime Total Cold and Flu Liquid. The effective medicine of Neocitrin in a unique warming syrup to provide soothing and comforting cold symptom relief. Neocitrin, good to be back. I don't know about you guys, but I am hungry. Oh, you bet. What time's our table book? Oh, why wait for the restaurant? Here. A zero percent. Not just any zero percent. It's my Silhouette Zero Plus. Silhouette Zero Plus is more than a zero percent yogurt. Say goodbye to added sugar and fat. Say hello to skim milk, a source of calcium, and four vitamins. Silhouette Zero Plus. Do yourself some good. Eat. And try our limited edition strawberry and lychee or raspberry and dragon fruit flavors. It's a nice sedan, Steve. <laughs> and I just said, nice ride, Steve! <laughs> He says it was either that or take Steve's car. <laughs> Whose car is right beside mine? Steve's. <laughs> Get the sedan that commands respect. Introducing the dynamic Japanese engineered Subaru Legacy. This Legacy's great. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Did you hear the one about Gary? <laughs> It's Furniture Villa Countrywide's huge fall clearance. Now at Furniture Villa Countrywide, shop drastic clearance price cuts on 25,000 square feet of brand name home furnishings. Find incredible buys like all leather Canadian made by Palliser sofas, just $9.99. Whirlpool Duet Washer Dryer Pairs, $15.99. Zerta Queen Size Mattress Sets, only $6.99. Plus pay nothing till 2011 during the huge fall clearance at Furniture Villa Countrywide. 1070 St. James Street between Sargent and Ellis. Serving Winnipeg since 1972. CBC News The National, now seven nights a week. The Canadian Perspective, more often. CBC News The National, tonight on CBC. Hi, Janet. The crowd filing in for the second final meeting of the regular season involving the Edmonton Eskimos and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. These two teams met on opening night, and when they did, it was a 1917 Edmonton win. Alexis Cerna failing on a late game field goal attempt that would have pushed the game to overtime. But the Bombers come into this one feeling good about things. They are 4 and 8 after that big win over Toronto last weekend, while Edmonton stands at 6 and 6. The teams uh, with different looks coming in from that first meeting on the season, especially when it comes to offense for the Blue Bombers. And Avi Khan says that's a good thing. When you break down film, you look at individual players and what they do and what their pattern is. So with all these new guys coming in, they won't know how to game scheme against them. So that's a real benefit for us. 
Uh, you know, Bishop's been around the league for a while, so he knows what's going on. But as far as scheming against players, uh, they're going to have a very hard time doing that. And I think Toronto had a hard time doing that, and so will Edmonton and probably for the rest of the year. Edmonton's banged up on defense, so that could help the Bombers as well. Ricky Ray, he's not banged up. He's up to his old tricks, ranked second in passing among CFL quarterbacks so far this season. But despite his strong play, he'd like to see more from his team and starting now. We've played some good games where uh, we went out and um, you know made the plays that we're supposed to and, and guys have been on the same page. But then there's games where um, we've had mistakes and uh, haven't played up to our, our you know expectations. So. Um, you know, we've been a little inconsistent and, um, you know, now, now's the time of the year where you want to become a consistent football team heading into the playoffs. All right, switching over to hockey, the Manitoba Moose play their home opener tonight at the MTS Center against the Houston Arrows. A Moose with something special this month. They've dedicated the month to promoting awareness and raising funds for breast cancer research. All kinds of promotions will be held throughout the month, including this beautiful pink ribbon puck night that's coming up. Something to look forward to. If you're interested in out finding out more about what the Moose will be doing, check out www.moosehockey.com. A couple of games in the NHL today, both played in Europe. Florida, a 4-3 shootout winner over Chicago, and St. Louis as Detroit by a 4-3 score as well. Janet, back to you. Hey Mitch, is it drizzling there? Uh, not really. A little cool, a little wind, but uh, nothing wet just yet. All right, thanks. Enjoy right. the game. You bet. Okay, rain is on the way. It's already been raining at the stadium. Stopped for now. Meteorologist John Sauter will show you when the rain will stop in his extended forecast. Plus, the symphony has run away with the circus. We'll show you why. You're watching CBC News Winnipeg. Stay tuned. Coming up on CBC Television, find out what the neighbors are up to on Coronation Street. Then buy a vowel, spin or solve. On Wheel of Fortune. And at 7.30, join me, Alex Trebek, for Jeopardy! on CBC Television. Introducing high-tech energy windows, specially designed for Manitoba's extreme climate. With patented new technology, guaranteed to reduce heating costs in the winter and cooling costs in the summer. High-tech energy windows qualify for PowerSmart financing. They're available in many styles and colors with a complete 25-year warranty. Ask for high-tech, premium quality windows at a price you can afford. High-tech energy windows. Hello. I need to make an appointment to speak to someone. You don't need to make an appointment. Brian here can see you right away. But appointments are important. They give the world structure. Okay, well, how about we meet about 2 o'clock then? 2 o'clock works. Talk to us anytime you want at TD Canada Trust. It's how we're making banking more comfortable. Oh, look at this. Would you ever have a facelift? You mean like this? Mm -hmm. Are you kidding? At 50. I have my own Nivea Expert. Come on, tell me. Introducing Nivea Visage Expert Lift. With hyaluronic acid, its unique formula instantly enhances your skin's tone and texture and improves its elasticity. Lift your look. Nivea Visage Expert Lift. It works for me. Because beauty is confidence. Ready? There you go. Welcome to A&W. What can I get for you today? Two teen burgers, please, to go. Sure. You'll be pleased to know these teens are two for six dollars right now. Is that right? Yes. Napkins are in the bag. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. That felt great. Next time, ask for the six dollars. Didn't I? No. Right now, get two teen burgers for only six dollars at A and W. Waiting for your chance to get away. Planning your escape for days and days. You can feel the earth under your feet You are like a dog who roams the streets Seek With its impressive interior and leases from $159 a month, Nissan Sentra is definitely the best part of your day. Remember at the top of the hour, I said have a jacket and an umbrella handy for the weekend. And here's why. 9 degrees tomorrow, 11 on Sunday. So cooler than it should be. And these showers are off and on through the weekend. Monday, less of a chance of a shower. It'll be widely scattered. We'll see a few more sunny breaks. And then late Tuesday, uh, there's a system to the south of us. And it may catch us with some rain that'll last through Wednesday. Then it looks cool 
and still a little bit of a mix of sun and cloud through the end of next week. Thanks, John. The Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra's resident conductor got to play Ringmaster today. Just take a look at this. This is resident conductor Richard Lee. He's on the podium. You'll see him first, but he is conducting the symphony as some of Canada's best acrobats, jugglers, and circus performers wow. perform. They're calling it Cirque de Symphony. Isn't that incredible? I can't do that. Oh. <laughs> I don't even want to try. No, no. No, not at all. It looks like an amazing time. It's all perfectly synchronized, the music and the acrobatics. It runs tonight, October 3rd and 4th. Oh. Wow. That looks really hard. It does look really <laughs> it does, hard. Yeah. Playing the amazing. instruments is hard too, and yeah, they do a great job. For sure. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe. Cairo 7 Eyewitness News starts right now.